Today we're going to learn how to make money. Money runs from the person who pursues it. Money is attracted to management. I want to define management for you. Uh, write it down if you have a pen and a paper. What is management? It's an effective, efficient, correct, and timely use of another person's property and resources for the purpose for which they've delegated it with a view to producing the expected added value back to the person. Management automatically implies that you do not own the material. It implies that when you bring it back, it's supposed to be better. It's supposed to have more value. That's management. God says, I won't allow the world to grow right now because I do not have anybody to add value to the things that I'm about to create. That's why God is upset at lazy people. You have to be diligent. You have to put in the work with the effort to work harder until you achieve. Focus, management, and prayer. God will never give you what you pray for, but only what you can manage solutions to financial problems i want to focus on specifically one of the most important keys in the kingdom for living financially free i want to give you a secret today one of the secrets jesus talked about when he talked about i will give you the keys of kingdom one of the most important kingdom keys is the principle of management write that down we're going to talk about this today the principle of management management is pro Probably the most absent component in the churches. The average pastors in the city graduated from the seminary or a Bible school and there was no class on management and they told him or her that you are ready to start a ministry. That is why most churches are suffering, broke or attracting broke people and that is why most of the people in the churches in the city are financially embarrassed. They quote scriptures but don't experience the scriptures. They claim that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, but they're still renting. This is embarrassing. They claim that the wealth of the wicked is laid out for the righteous. And for the last 2,000 years, the wicked still has it. And the reason is because they have avoided the most important principle of kingdom life, which is management. The average pastor can't even spell the word management. If you ask me, what should you study to prepare yourself for the ministry? My answer would be study business management, not theology, business management. Because a kingdom is a government. A kingdom is an administration and governments are in the business of management of resources. And the key to good government is the effective management, delegation and distribution of the resources. Religious people believe that God operates in emotions. So somehow they believe if they can just get God to feel sorry for them, they can get any Anything they want that's why they're still broke let's talk about the crisis that is going on around the world you got wars all over the place you got war in Ukraine Russia Ukraine Israel and Palestine the cause of most of the crisis is greed the crisis that we see in the bank economical downturn is greed greed is the mismanagement of resources for personal benefits that's greed what is greed a mismanagement of resources for personal benefits that's great in other words a greedy spirit will manipulate resources so that he or she can be the ultimate benefit only that's great jesus said something about greed these are the things that destroy a man greed malice deceit envy arrogance and folly and many more they are all related a greedy person is mostly an arrogant person and if you are arrogant and greedy you are foolish all of these evils come from inside from the mind from the heart luke chapter 12 jesus repeats this sentence and he says watch out be on your guard against all kinds of greed watch out it can get you unaware you gotta watch yourself greed is so sneaky you might think you are holy and righteous and really you're simply greedy greed can sneak up on you and go just right there under you under your heart these things are evil a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions jesus said you're trying to get money today we're going to talk about god's dominion strategy which is the foundation for you to become financially smart. Genesis 2 verse 4. Let's read it again. When the Lord God has made the earth, and no shrub of the field has yet appeared on the earth, and no plant of the field has yet come up, 
Why? Because the Lord had not yet sent rain on the earth. Why? Because there was no man to work the ground. Let's not rush in this verse. We have a record of God creating the heaven and the earth, and he says there was no life on the earth. Massive planet in space, but there's no life on the earth. No animals, no trees, no grass, just rocks. He didn't allow anything to grow because God has not sent rain. God refused to let anything grow and it was because he wanted it to be like that. God was withholding growth because he had a plan for the planet. He was withholding, he was holding back progress and stopping development. He didn't want anything to advance. He didn't allow anything to come to life. He didn't allow anything to grow because there was a problem. What is the problem? There was no man. That was the problem. There was no man men to manage everything because there was no man to work the ground. God's motivation for the creation of man was to make a manager who will work the ground. He was lacking something. He was lacking a man, a species that will work the ground. He was lacking man. The word work that God used in that verse was the word management. He refused to let anything grow because he didn't have a manager. He didn't have a man to work work the ground, to manage the resources, to manage everything. You have to understand this world. Now, many people are complaining to God why they are poor. Many people are in bad situations. Many people don't even have food. Many people say God doesn't exist. Many people say God only loves white people. God says to you today that he didn't make people with preferences. He just made people. Some become rich, some become poor, depending on how they manage, regardless of the race regardless of the height god didn't allow anything to grow anything to spring up anything to progress because he was lacking a manager to manage the ground god did not create you to have worship services god did not create you to sing in the choir god did not create you to be a preacher or a pastor or a deacon he wanted a manager someone who will take care of the resources of the ground of the soil if you are a bad manager you will lose your resources you will stay broke. God says he didn't allow anything to grow until he finds a manager of those things. Your primary assignment is God needed a manager. The divine strategy of God was for mankind to dominate the earth through work. Can you imagine the creator was held up because he had no manager? There's some things we learn from this passage. Number one, God protects his resources from bad managers. Number two, God withholds resources from bad managers. Number three, God won't allow growth where there is bad manager. Number four, God will never answer a prayer requested by anyone who is a bad manager. I've come to the conclusion that the principal key of kingdom on earth given to mankind is this. Management. Management. Say it. Management. <laughs> Say it again. Management. Yes. One of the reasons why you're working for someone else, one of the reasons why you lost your house, one of the reasons why you're in debt is because you neglected this word management. Religion is a killer. It destroys because it takes away the very thing you need the most. Management. Management demands work and religion makes you lazy. This is why Christians love miracles above management. Miracles cancel management. Some of you think God likes miracles. He does not like miracles because miracles destroy the principle of management. Miracles are like the lottery. You gain without effort. That's why I hate gambling because gambling is an attempt for you to gain without work. I discern that you buy lottery. Lottery is ungodly because it cancels work. Management. 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 Say management. Management. Today we're going to learn how to make money. Money runs from the person who pursues it. Money is attracted to management. I want to prove it right now from the Bible. I'm about to dismantle your ideas about miracles. Miracles are for lazy people. Do you remember in the Bible when people came to Jesus and said, we want to see miracles, show us the miracles? Jesus answered to them. 
Only a wicked and an adulterous generation seek for miracles. That's what is wrong with us. We searching for miracles, looking for miracles around. I want to define management for you. Uh, write it down if you have a pen and a paper. What is management? It's an effective, efficient, correct, and timely use of another person's property and resources for a purpose for which they've delegated it with a view to producing the expected added value back to the person. Management automatically implies that you do not own the material. It implies that when you bring it back, it's supposed to be better. It's supposed to have more value. That's management. God says, I won't allow the world to grow right now because I do not have anybody to add value to the things that I'm about to create. That's why God is upset at lazy people. You have to be diligent. You have to put in the work with the effort to work harder until you achieve. Focus, management, and prayer. God will never give you what you pray for, but only what you can manage. You are praying for a thousand dollars, but God says, I gave you a hundred. You can't even give ten. You are praying for a house, but the house you are renting, you're keeping it very dirty. You cannot manage anything. You cannot manage somebody's property, and you're asking for a property of your own. You're praying for a bigger church, and God says, you can't manage the church that you're renting, and you're asking God to give you. You pray for souls, and you want God to give you many souls, but the people you have now, you cannot manage. That's why God protects them from you because you lack management. You lack the wisdom of God, the understanding of God, the knowledge of God, the spirit of management. You are praying for a million dollars. If you get that million dollars that you are paying for today, it will kill you. You will spend 200 bucks on interest, $150 on your heel, and put $20 in the offering and asking God for a million dollars. You think God will give you a million dollars? Today we're going to talk about money and management. You know what? God will never give you your own business first. He will always give you employment first because he wants to watch you handle other people's companies, including their times. Write this down. God wants you to be an economist. To economize means to bring the maximum out of the minimum. The average person in this world is not an economist because they don't know the value of what they have. You have the audacity to tell God that you are broke, but in your house, there is a heaven that you use only twice a week. That's abuse. That's bad management. You got a heaven sitting there idle for six days of the week. You only use it on Sunday. You could have at least get some flour and water and some raisins, bake some cookies every day, put it in a plastic bag and make yourself a factory out of your own kitchen. That's management. Now you lazy person, you're looking for a job. That's your problem. You're looking for a job. That's bad management. That's bad management. To economize means to get the most out of the list. You got clothing in the closet that you don't wear. They've been there for 10 years. You put on a lot of weight. They can never fit you again. And you telling me that you don't have money? Take them and go sell them. Take a deep breath. To economize means to add value to the gift. Answered prayer is regulated by your capacity to manage. God will never give you what you pray for. He regulates your answer by what you can manage. So he wants to see if you can manage it. God answers to you depending on your management level. Money is easy to make. Money is supposed to come to you. So if it keeps moving away from you, it's telling you something. You can't manage. I'm serious about this. You can't manage. If it runs away from you, if money runs away from you, you can't manage. Because God does not encourage waste. We don't manage. We waste things. The reason why God created tithing, tithing has nothing to do with giving God money. Can I say it again? Tithing has nothing to do with giving giving God money. God doesn't need anything from us. We cannot even give anything to God because everything on this earth already belongs to God. He doesn't need anything from us. So when God says something, it's not because he needs it. When God gives a principle, it's not that he needs it. Tithing and offering is God's management training program for mankind. God doesn't need a penny from us. 10% of everything is mine, God says. We only think of money. That's our problem. If you get 10 pair of shoes, one of them is not yours. You get 10 dresses, one of them is not yours. You get 10 oranges, one of them is not yours. If you got 24 hours in a day, 2 hours and 24 minutes don't belong to you. You got no time to pray. You got 2 hours and 24 minutes that don't belong to you every single day. Use those. You are faith every day if you don't use those 2 hours and 24 minutes per day to pray. You are tired all the time. You're sleeping 
depending on God's time. You spend two hours, four hours, eight hours watching television, watching some series from Netflix, but you cannot even give God 10% of your 24 hours in one day. You think money is your problem. Money is not your problem. God could any time of the day command you to give that dress away. One of them is not yours. God can command you if you have 10 cars to give one of them to somebody. One of them is not yours. So tithing and offering is not about money. It's about management. Can you consistently, God says, put aside 10% of everything for my purpose? That's tithing. Can you consistently? Now let me tell you something. 100% of everything belongs to God. What did I say? 100% of everything belongs to God. 100% of everything belongs to God. You understand? So God blesses you with a paycheck of a thousand dollars. How much of that belongs to God? A thousand dollars, huh? Now you're very smart. So how much God said to put aside for his work? 10%. How much is left? 90%. How much belongs to God? 100%. So why, if God owns all the 100% and asks you to put aside 10%, why? Because it's not about the money. It's about your ability to put it aside. It's your control, your discipline to put it aside. He is after your discipline. God is after your discipline. If you can manage the 10% properly, then he is happy to trust you with the 90% that is left but because you've been unfaithful in the 10 percent you keep losing the 90 percent so you end up with no percent that's why you broke now you tell god i cannot pay tithe this week we are in crisis god is saying what are you talking about your salvation is in your obedience your name is in the book of life because of the grace of god unmerited favor little things that you obey will help you to keep in good relationship with god accountability discipline for you to put it aside every single time you need discipline honesty you need honesty for you to put a tithe to keep a tithe you need to be honest managers must be honest diligence you need diligence you work at it constantly you make sure you don't steal that 10% that's what managers are supposed to do faithfulness you have to be faithful to tithe trustworthiness for you to manage tithe God has to trust you with that money I just give you a characteristic of a manager they are accountable they are honest they are diligent they are faithful, they are trustworthy, and they are honest. Jesus one day showed top class management. One day, Jesus had 5,000 people in a field, and they were all hungry. And it was like uh, 5,000 plus men and children, so it was about 11 to 12,000. I want you to watch God at work. So it says they sit down in groups. This is what management does to you accountability, discipline. For you to put that aside every single time, it takes control. What is the third word? Honesty. For you to be a tither. That means no one is watching you except God. And he knows if you paid it or not. He can lie to everybody else, but God knows if you paid 10%. That means it makes you honest. And managers must be honest. What's the fourth word? Diligence. Diligence means you work at it constantly to make sure you don't steal that 10%. That's what managers are supposed to. What's the next word? That's what is wrong with managers. They are not faithful. Money takes faithfulness to tie. A manager has to be trustworthy. For you to manage the finances, God has got to trust you. I just gave you the characteristic of a manager. They are accountable. They are honest, they are diligent, they are faithful, and they are trustworthy, and they are honest. Jesus one day showed top class management. One day he had 5,000 people in a field, and they were all hungry. And he said plus women and children, so it was about 12,000. And he was about to distribute some resources to them. I want you to watch him at work. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, that's administration. Then he took the five loaves and the two fishes, that's the resources. Looking up to the one who owns it, he thanked them for letting him using that's appreciation that means doesn't belong to you someone else's property he broke it then he gave it to his disciples and they gave it to the people a delegation that's management watch him he also divided the two fish and gave them and they all ate and were satisfied that customer service give god hands for good customer service all were satisfied now watch his management kick in he told his disciples to pick up every crumb every pieces of bread that was left and told them to put them in baskets. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to imagine this. 12,000 people on the field breaking bread and fish. Now, how is it that Jesus told them to pick up all the leftovers, pick up every crumb and bring it to me? I don't want to waste anything. So Jesus doesn't support wasting resources. The culture of waste is not liked by God. There are some people 
who go to the buffet because you know it's free food it's eat all you can eat you pile up on the plate and you eat just half or one third and the rest you go throw it you leave it and you go take another plate and god is taking notes and he says this person wastes food and this is not funny god made them pick up the crumbs it was not the crumbs that were important it was the lesson that he was teaching that day you don't waste food you don't waste resources you have to look at everything that you have and manage every corner and use it use it because god is watching you if you cannot manage the little things that god gave you if you cannot manage the house that is not yours if you cannot manage the car that is not yours if you cannot manage the job that you do not own will not give you the things of your own you have to manage properly you need to have a big mind to think big to always do your best to do big things even if you are living in a small space you can take photos or videos from different angles to make it look big because you are using every single corner you are using every single resource that god gave you to produce when you are faithful over another man's property god will give you property of your own when you are faithful to another man's job another man's car another man's business god will give you businesses of your own god is watching every single thing that we do he's watching how you keep the house that you are renting can we handle the big things that is preparing for us to have it all depends on the way you are handling the small things here's one thing about management everything that you need to know about management management is diligence with resources proverbs 13 22 says this a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children and the sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous a good man if you are a good man some things show up in your life if you are a good man there is no crime is in a good man's life a good man has so much that he has enough to give to his children's children now a good man has so much now that he has enough for his unborn grandchildren and he said that man is the man that will get what is stored up by the sinners the sinners are storing up wealth for the good man a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children a car is not an inheritance because it cannot last until your children's children are alive. It cannot be clothing. Clothing is wearing every single day. The only heritage that the Bible really teaches as generational wealth is real estate. Real estate. God never gave Adam shoes, clothes, food, or desk or chair. God gave Adam real estate. He gave him a garden. He gave him real estate. There's a land, he says. God never gave Isaac food and clothes. He promised him real estate. God never gave Moses food and clothes. He gave him real estate. God never gave Jacob food and clothes. He gave him real estate, the land. That's why they call it real estate. It's the only estate that is real. That's why they call it real estate. It is the only estate that is real that you're going to give as an inheritance to your children's children. Think about this. You are not wealthy until you own land. I'm giving you an assignment for the new year that is coming, 2024. Before the end of the year 2024, make sure you have a deposit for a property. 10% deposit for a property, piece of land or a house. Buy it. That's wealth. That's wealth. It's not clothes. It's not food. It's not table and chair. Blessed are those who have been mourning all their lives looking for the answers. They can now be filled. Blessed are those who are meek for they shall inherit the earth, the land, real estate. That's the generation of wealth that God has promised to the humankind. Write the word meek down. Meek is the opposite of what you've been told. Meek write it down it means controlled strength controlled power meek means self-discipline now let's quote it in the original text concept blessed are those who control themselves who discipline themselves who can buy clothes and cars they cannot afford they take lunch rather than buy it the meek people people have self-control people who don't go to the clubs people who don't go every night to eat people who don't waste their money on branded clothes people who gather little by little that's why you are broke you eat too much food you can't afford you eat too much you go to fancy restaurants in the malls in the resorts in the hotel you go eat there a lot and you finish all your money there instead of investing there's one book that i would like to recommend you the 
Automatic Millionaire. This is one of the best books that you can read. It describes great management.